Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Music Theory Tuition series where I work with you step by step through the ABRSM Discovering Music Theory grades. I'll work through every single exercise and explain everything you need to know. You can access information about the books I have available to help you on my website. Go to SharonBill.com. For advert free and longer lessons, you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sharon Bill. If you can give me a like, that would be super. And please do subscribe to my channel to stay updated. You can support this channel by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Sharon Bill. Let's turn now to page 65 of the Grade 4 Discovering Music Theory and Context Workbook looking at chapter 10, Music in Context. And here we get the opportunity to test our knowledge, looking at little bits and bobs of anything that we've covered so far. And we are referring to this little extract of music to answer questions using the knowledge that we've gained. And so we are going to look at this exercise together. I do suggest you have a go yourself first. And so we'll look at it together now. And so we're asked here, which bar contains a mordant? So let's look through the music. And we're looking at the ornaments. Well, that's a turn. That's a mordant. In actual fact, it's an upper mordant, isn't it? The lower mordant has a line through it, but generally speaking, that's a mordant. Sometimes the upper mordant is just called a mordant, and then lower mordant determines the lower one. We could say upper mordant or just mordant. And so that's bar five. Which bar includes part of a rising chromatic scale? So music going upwards in semitones. And rather than just scouring through every single note, we can kind of get the hint of what we're looking for just by looking for lots of accidentals when we're looking for chromatic sections because we're going to have to keep adding sharps, flats or naturals and so on. And so I suggest this is a good place to start. And this is where having your piano keyboard really helps. A little diagram, you can quickly draw one out. Let's see what we've got here. Now do bear in mind, we've got a key signature of B flats, E flats, A flat. So that is already a B flat. Then we get a B natural, then we get a C, then we get a D flat, then we get a D, then we get an E flat, which actually we don't really need because the key signature does that for us. I think they're just being kind there. Then we get an E natural and then we get an F. So actually from here to here is a rising chromatic scale. And so that tells us what we're looking for, so there, bar four. Now then, in which bar does the music get gradually louder for the first time? So we can see there are lots of little dynamic markings here. We've got crescendos here and here, but where does it get louder for the first time? Now we start off quietly and, and tenderly, and here, this is where it starts to get louder. Crescendo is another way of showing that sign, we just got it in word form rather than diagram form. So actually that's bar four also. Now here we're asked to find the first three notes which make the dominant triad in E flat major. So chord one is built on E flat and chord five, if we count up five from E flat, one, two, three, four, five takes us to B flat. So we're looking for the chord built on B flat. So build your triad from there. B flat, D, F, first, third, fifth. The B flat will be shown in the key signature, so we won't see it as an accidental. So we're just looking for notes B, D, and F. The B will be flattened. So what can we find? We have a D and an F. But it's not the first three notes that we need. Although it's there, it's got to be the first three notes. So here we have an F, but then we have an E. We want to 
F, B, D, F, don't we? I guess they could be in any order, so long as those three notes are the first notes. Well, that's not going to be it. That's the chromatic scale. We have a D, D, D. That's not the first three notes making the triad, is it? That's just part of the triad. That's definitely not a triad. They're going in step. That starts with a C. That's not correct. Here we go, right at the very end. B, D, F. That, of course, is a B flat because of the key signature. So right at the very end, the last bar begins with the first three notes of the dominant triad of E flat major. Now, how many times does the median note of E flat major occur? So the median, if you remember, is the third. So one, two, three. If E flat is the first, the key signature will deal with that. F, G is the third. So how many times does note G occur? Let's see. And bear in mind that can be in any octave. So we're looking for a G here, a G hop here, up here, or, or even way below middle C. Let's see what we can find. Well, here's a note G. Every good boy deserves football. G is after that. Nothing here. Nothing yet, just keep looking. So here's a G. There's one. Here's a G. And here's a G. Just have a quick scan through, make sure we've not missed any. I think that's it. One, two, three, four. There we go, just four times do we get this the median. Okay, is it true or is it false that the melody begins with the interval of a minus six? What do we begin with? So before we worry about major, minor or anything like that, let's find out the number. We have a one, two, three, fourth. So that's a fourth, not even a sixth of any sort. So that's false. Is it true or false that the final bar contains all the notes in the scale of E flat major. So let's look at that final bar. So all of the notes of the scale would be E, F, G, A, B, C, D. We don't need to write E again. Of course it will be B flats, E flats and A flats, but your key signature will deal with that. Let's see what we've got. So we have an E flat. There we have an F. We do have a G, we've already spotted that. We have an A and a B, A flat and B flat of course. The key signature will deal with that. There's a note C and there's a note D. So yes, we do have every single note, albeit in a different order, but the scale is all present. Now, is it true or false that the melody should be played with passion? Now, passion, played passionately, is a passionata, as is quite memorable. And we're actually told to play tenderly here, aren't we? So that's false. Quite the opposite, I would suggest. Not quite so impassioned. And then we get to choose which of the following bars will sound the same as bar three. So it may be written differently, and we can see we've changed clef, so which is going to be the same sound as bar three? Let's think what we've got here. So we have, there's middle C, there's the F, there's the F above that. Coming down in step and back to the F. So we're an octave plus, aren't we? Let's see what we've got here. Of course, our key signature is B flats, E flats, A flats with 12 over 8. So what do we have here? So this is middle C, D, E, F. That's the F above middle C. And so that's going to be an octave too low, isn't it? 
Now here, this is the C, D, E, F above middle C. However, we're then told to play an octave higher, so we're now in the correct range. Let's see what happens. Now here we have an F, then we have an E flat, then we have a D, then we have a C back to the F. And that's exactly what we've got here because the E flat is in the key signature. We have an F, an E flat, a D, a C, and back to the F. And so this is correct, isn't it? And so here, although this looks like it might be the same, the reason we go wrong here is because that's an E natural, and then that's a D flat. The flat's in the wrong place, isn't it? So that's why that's incorrect. Now then, on this last question, we need to show which of these represents bar one correctly rewritten in notes of half the value. So let's look at bar one. So here we are in 12 8 and so that means 12 quaver beats per bar and what we need here to halve that we still need to stay with 12 as our top number we're in compound time and it needs to be quadruple but now to halve it we need to be in semi quaver beats per bar so we need 12 over 16 and so straight away that won't do that's the wrong time signature. We've changed to duple time here where it should be quadruple time, remembering that 12 over 8 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 quaver beats. It's quadruple time, four beats there, four accented beats. And so 12 over 16 must be four groups of three each time now being a dotted quaver. So that won't do. However, this one looks like it's the correct time signature and key signature, but let's look at the notes. So what should this look like? Halved. And so we should have a dotted quaver with three semi-quavers and then a dotted quaver then a quaver and a semi-quaver so they will be beamed so there's our one, two, three, four what do we have here? so we have a dotted quaver that should be, that's our first group that should be on its own and then they should be joined together and then this bit is correct. So we, we're not beamed correctly here, are we? So here, we're in the right pitch, we've got the right time signature, the right key signature, and we can see we've got our dotted quaver, group of three semi-quavers, dotted quaver, quaver, semi-quaver. That's the one that's correctly grouped as well. So that's that page completed. I hope this is helpful to your studies. Please do like and subscribe to stay updated. If you'd like to support this channel, you can buy me a coffee. And for advert-free lessons, you can become a patron. Do visit my website where you'll find many resources available to help you. Visit SharonBill.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.